By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of all three rectangle commands that are available in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The rectangle tool is a commonly used sketch tool in any CAD program. To make things even more efficient, Fusion 360 offers three types of rectangles, all of which I'll be covering in this video. Similar to the line command, the rectangle tool can be accessed from multiple places. First, it can be activated from the sketch dropdown list. It's here that you'll see the rectangle flyout menu has three different types. There are two point rectangles, three point rectangles, and center rectangles. You'll notice the two point rectangle can also be activated with the keyboard shortcut letter R. Additionally, if I right click and look at the right click menu, you'll see that I can access all three rectangles. I can also select Sketch in the Marking menu, followed by the two-point rectangle in the upper right-hand area. Lastly, I can quickly access the rectangle, or really any sketch tool, by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter S, which brings up the shortcuts box. Then I can type out rectangle, and you'll notice that all three options are available, and I'll go ahead and select the two-point rectangle. After activating the rectangle tool, you'll be prompted to select an origin plane to create a sketch on. Or, if you already have any existing 3D geometry, you can create a sketch on one of its faces. I'll go ahead and select the bottom plane or the XZ origin plane. Now, I chose the two point rectangle, but the good thing about Fusion 360 is that it gives us the option to change rectangles before I click to place any lines. You'll see in the sketch palette that I can toggle between two point, three point, and center rectangles. I'll go ahead and leave it at two point rectangle for now. With the two point rectangle, you'll be required to set the first point followed by the second point which is the opposite corner. I'll click on the origin point and drag out with my mouse. Similar to the line command, you'll notice that there are two input fields. We can enter a dimension for both the length and the width of the rectangle. If you would like to type one before the other, you can always use the tab key to toggle back and forth between inputs. I'll type out 15 millimeters for the height, followed by the tab key. Now, when pressing the tab key after typing out a dimension, it locks that dimension in place so you don't accidentally change it. However, if you do decide you need to change it, you can hit the tab key again until the input field is highlighted, and you can change the input to whatever dimension you desire. At this point, I'll need to specify the length of the rectangle. I'll type out 30 millimeters followed by the tab key. Now you'll see, as I move my mouse cursor around the origin, I could place the opposite corner of the rectangle on any side. I'll go ahead and place it in the upper right hand corner by clicking with my mouse. You'll notice a few things that are similar to the line command. First off, as with any sketch tool, the sketch tool remains active until you hit the escape key or activate another command. Therefore, if I wanted to, I could click again to start another rectangle and a second time to finish it. Then I'll hit the escape key to exit the rectangle tool. Now I want you to look closely at each of these two rectangles. You'll notice that one of them has black lines while the other has blue lines. The first rectangle I created has all black lines because the geometry is fully defined. If I click on any of the lines and try to drag them, I won't be able to. And the only way I can alter this rectangle without removing its constraints is by updating the dimensions. 
you'll notice that each line has a horizontal or vertical constraint that was automatically applied. And this is why the rectangle tool is so powerful versus creating one manually with the line tool. Now having constraints on all four lines also ensures that a rectangle is locked in place and fully constrained. If you're not familiar with constraints, then be sure to check out my other video that I'll link to down below in the video description. Let's go ahead and take a look at this other rectangle that I created. For this rectangle, I didn't add any specific dimensions. Because of this, this rectangle can be resized if I select any line and drag it. I can also drag and resize any of the four corners. However, you'll notice that the lines remain vertical or horizontal because even though I didn't add any dimensions, these vertical and horizontal constraints are still automatically applied when using the two-point rectangle tool. As you can imagine, the fact that this rectangle can be moved around freely is not necessarily a good thing. You wouldn't want a sketch of your model to get messed up on accident, which is why you should be creating your sketches to be driven by the dimensions and constraints. Now, let's take a look at the other two rectangles and how they differ from the two-point rectangle. I'll go to the sketch dropdown list and select the three-point rectangle. The three-point rectangle is similar to the two-point rectangle, with the difference being that you will need to define a total of three points. I'll click the first point, and you'll see that it appears we have to draw one of the sides of the rectangle. I'll draw the bottom side and give it a dimension of 30 millimeters, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then, I'll have to click to set the side of the rectangle. Next, you'll see as I drag my mouse cursor up or down, I can set the remainder of the rectangle. I'll type out 15 millimeters for the height, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. I'll click once again to set the final side of the rectangle, and I'll hit the escape key to exit the rectangle tool. Now, you'll notice a few differences when we compare this three-point rectangle to the two-point rectangle above. The three-point rectangle automatically applies parallel constraints to the lines, along with a perpendicular constraint in the corner. You'll find yourself choosing the three-point rectangle when you need just a bit more control. However, for most applications, the two-point rectangle is used, which is why it's the default for the keyboard shortcut letter R. Now the last rectangle to cover is the center rectangle. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter R and then select center rectangle in the sketch palette. In order to start a center rectangle, you have to select its center point, which can be super handy if you need to line the center point up with already existing sketch geometry. Then you'll see you can define both the height and length or you can simply click on a point to set the rectangle. If I zoom in, you'll notice that the center rectangle has diagonal construction lines. Now these construction lines help ensure that the rectangle is centered on that first point that you use to set the rectangle. The center rectangle also includes a combination of parallel constraints, a horizontal constraint, and a perpendicular constraint. And because the center of the rectangle is not tied to anything, I can click and hold on that center and move the rectangle around. If I had created a center rectangle on pre-existing geometry, then I would not be able to move the rectangle around by its center point. In summary, you'll find yourself using just about every type of rectangle at some point throughout your time in Fusion 360. Now each rectangle offers a different advantage, and they all help you create a rectangle faster and more efficiently than if you were to manually create one with the line tool. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.